What what would you say you do here? It's the Signal Chords, home of the Underground Podcast. A podcast dedicated to up-and-coming bands, labels, artists, and more. Plug in and join your host, Brad Nunnery, as he dives deep into what the future of music has to hold and discover something new along the way. What else do you have to do? Hey, this is Jared with Modern Inks, and you're listening to Signal Chords, the home of the Underground Podcast. Give it all you got this and from the comfort of their own. It's a matter of our fans that they said, toss away and all alone. Reaching for the answers to those questions we all have. Let me never be answered until we turn by the road. Chasing so far by the day. That's the latest song from our friends in Modern Inks. It's called They Said, a brand new song off their upcoming debut LP called Part X, uh, available on September 3rd via Punkerton Records. Many thanks to uh, Jared for recording that promo for us. Really do appreciate it, man. If you want to find out more about Modern Inks, you can visit them on any social media platform at modern.inks.band. All right, good stuff. What's up, everybody? My name is Brad Nunnery. Welcome to Signal Chords. Home of the Underground Podcast, Season 2, Episode 11, presented by my good friend Jeff Small over at 1603 Designs. My guest tonight is the man behind San Diego's pop-punk band Dreams of Vertigo. His name is Doug Ferguson, and uh, Doug has a brand new song out. It's called Dopamine Machine, a really killer song. It's a love song. Uh, it's not what you think. It's it's a love song about how we're all in love with our devices, and uh, <laughs> it's, it's really cool. It's a fun video. Uh, we're going to get into that here in a second, but we're going to break down that song as well as uh, his covers of Event Sevenfold, Green Day, and what it's like working with uh, you know, Mike Herrera from MXPX, Tony Lovato from Mest, and uh, Adrian Estrella from Zebrahead and Assuming We Survive. Uh, he's worked in the music business. He's got a lot of insight of what it takes for bands just starting out. So we're going to pick his brain and uh, talk to him for a little bit. But right now, here is the latest music video from Dreams of Vertigo. It is called Dopamine Machine, and it's on Signal Chords, home of the Underground Podcast. On the eve of a nervous breakdown, fourth one I've had today. Call it what you will, but I have lost my sanity. You heal the way I feel, this seems so surreal. You bring me solace and promise to fix my world. Doug from Dreams of Vertigo, thank you so much, man, for uh, joining the podcast. Really appreciate it. It's been a long time coming. Like a lot of these uh, episodes, uh, getting to know a lot of bands and uh, finally get to meet you face to face. How you doing, man? Yeah, I'm doing good, man. Yeah, it, it has been a while. Um, yeah. It's been, I think we've been trying to set it up for like almost a year or so. You're a popular man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's uh, it's one of those things where I can only do them every couple of weeks. And right. this these past few weeks have been back to back because I had to reschedule one of mine. So it was like back to mm -hmm. back to back. So every Monday for the past three weeks, you're the last one. I have a two week break uh, after this, but uh, oh, nice. it's been it's been a little hectic um but it's been all good man i've been i've been you know talking to people and and great bands like your uh like your band dreams of vertigo and you know i'm so happy to finally talk to you because i know we ha you and i have had communication for over the past few years and yeah uh, you know we're both and I, it's been fun fans to watch and, you grow too oh yeah well i don't know about that yeah, <laughs> just, yeah. one day at a time 
Yeah, exactly. I don't know if I'm growing. Yeah, you, you never know. Yeah. One day he's like, oh, man, I'm killing it. And the next day you're like, I'm a piece of shit. I don't know what I'm doing. Yeah. So I don't know if you feel like that when you're when you're creating music, but that's how I feel running this page or or podcast. King for a day, fool for a, life, fool for a lifetime. Faith no more. Uh, that's my Yeah, exactly. Uh, that's my credo. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. I love it. I love it. All right, so we just came out of uh, Dopamine Machine. It is your first uh, original song since 2020. And yeah. uh, it's it's an amazing... Uh, I, I was trying to come up with a fancy term for it. It's... Uh, mm -hmm. What was... And it was like literally five minutes before you got on the line. And it was... Uh, it was pure power pop punk. That's that's oh, the, that. uh, that's the uh, yeah. It's a whole bunch of P's and I can't say it uh, fast, but uh, I, I said it first and I did. I said it for the first time and I didn't screw it up. So I love the song. <laughs> it's it's fast. It's fast forward. It's it's pedals to the metal pop punk. I love it. Uh, it's been worth the wait. Um, but if you could tell me what took so long to get some original material out there and uh, and why now? Um, so there was I don't know. Um... There was this, uh, for a couple of years, we were in this thing. It was called a pandemic or something. I don't know. Whatever. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> something about that, yeah. <laughs> it was weird. Um, yeah. No, honestly, like, it was just one of those things where, like, 2020 rolled around, and I had released a song called Typical, which I did with Adrian from uh, Assuming yep. We Survive, and now he's a singer for Zebrahead, which is just so cool. Um, yeah, and I want to talk about that, too. We'll talk about that song here in a little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, so, yeah. you know, I was riding that that way for a little bit and then obviously with everything that happened with the pandemic um it was a little bit harder to get out places i started working with um one of my buddies uh actually ben from yellow card um he opened nice. a live what did he call it a live uh basically they were just doing live streaming for for bands like they would come into a studio and you know sure um yeah. you know do like a full-on concert but it was all like live streamed and yeah. um so that was really fun so you know kind of like you know between that and i mean i had a lot to say but um it was just the opportunity wasn't there and and i'm always the kind of guy that like i don't want to write a song just to write a song you know what i mean like sure. i'm not the kind of guy that's like okay well i need to write a song tonight so what do i write about what do i want to write a song about it's like no i if something comes to me at three o'clock in the morning and I can record it, cool. Um, but I don't like to force things, um, sure. you know, but really in the meantime, since 2020, I mean, I've released three or four covers, you know, and mm -hmm. kind of watched, um, watch my numbers grow. And uh, I, I think between that and just the timing, I, I wrote it with my buddy, Chris, um, it, it was just time for an original song like i, I had sure. released three or four covers in a row and i was like okay let's do an original song i don't want the new fans to think that all i do is cover songs you know what i mean so um yeah. and then just this opportunity with dopamine machine came and it just i just ran with it really yeah it's a it's an incredible song and it's a credible message and you know i kind of you know send you some pre pre-show questions and you kind of gave me some insight as far as uh the meaning of this song and it's very personal uh, to anybody out there who owns a smartphone uh, and how we've become, you know, kind of, uh, I guess, addicted or our love for our phones mm -hmm. and just totally connected to it. And I, I know I am because 90% of what I do on this podcast and with signal cords is on my phone. So I can't right, help right. But, but do stuff, you know, I don't have, uh, you know, a mixing board and be able to instruments and do all that kind of stuff and distract myself from the phone everything right. i do everything i do is my phone you know and, and then it it yeah. leads into other things of my life and then I'm, i find myself you know if i'm not doing signal cord stuff i'm constantly looking at it so right. i don't know if you want to walk me through your thought process and in, in, in creating the lyrics and, and the message in the song so yeah it was you know it was one of those days where um i was just i was heading home and i think i had the news on because it was like there was you know typical california traffic um, so I wanted to see what the traffic was and it was just, so here in, in Orange County, they do traffic's on traffic on the five. So every five or every, on every five, they do the traffic. I turned it on like a couple minutes early cause I wanted to see the traffic. And there was this, um, they were talking to this professor and they were doing a study about how, and it was mostly in, you know, kind of kids where, um, they get this kick of dopamine 
every time they, you know, pick up their, their phone or they're looking at their iPad or they're just right. watching TV. It's just, it's a, it's a kick of dopamine that they get and it's an addiction and it's, it's no different than the addiction that people have to, you know, alcohol or drugs or whatever. It's just, it's obviously less deadly, obviously, but, um, right. well, sort of, and well, it yeah. just kind of, um, it ignited this idea in my head of like, we're just victims to this dopamine machine. Um, and that name just kind of came to me. Um, and, and it was just the, the whole idea of writing a really um, happy love song, but you know, kind of towards the end, you find out it's not, it's not about a girl or it's not about a boy. It's not, you know, it, it's about, yeah. it's about your phone. Yeah. It's right. about the addiction, addiction to your phone. Um, right. And um, I just thought that was a really cool message, you know, because it's something that we can all relate to. I mean, how many times have you gone to Starbucks and like, just go to Starbucks and look around like every single person That's is ridiculous. on their phone or yeah, at a concert uh, or at a church. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know, it's like everybody's always on their phone. Um, and I was part of that um, generation where like when I was in, junior high into high school was kind of right around when the internet was becoming a thing. So like mm -hmm. we were still doing research with like encyclopedias and stuff like Books, that. Right. Yeah. So like, <laughs> I'm not, um, I I'm, I'm the kind of guy that like, if I escape and go to like, you know, a Starbucks or something like that, and I don't have my phone, it's not the end of the world, but yeah. I feel like I'm one of the last people, you know, that can say that because we're so, so addicted to it. And, yeah. uh, it's like another, it's like, if we lose our hand, right? Like, you know, right. I suppose we could live without our hand, but oh my God, I don't have my hand <laughs> right. <laughs> you know right. I mean? well, so. or you just buy a hand and, and attach it on. You yeah. know? Like, yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so it was kind of that whole idea. And, and then just the whole, the music video, the way that it, it came together was just, it was an awesome, awesome experience. Yeah. It's a, it's a great music video too. Um, and I don't know who crafted that head, uh, but the, the the mask or or whatever it was a crochet or not crochet but uh what do you call it uh i uh, forget uh what do you call it when you like macrame not macrame but uh I don't know, so plaster. what we did so, is what was it uh, so my buddy I guess my sure. buddy sean uh who is the director um yeah. he created the entire thing from scratch um and i had this cool idea of just like you know a, a a static face or a mask or whatever it was, but I didn't really know that whole thing is just not my forte. Mm -hmm. So I came to him with the idea and he's like, dude, what if we just create a mask? And so basically it's just different layers of different types of paper mache. Paper and mache. Yes. That's, what, that's the word yeah. I look for. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then there's like rubber ears that we used. Um, and he just, he built it all himself. It took him about three weeks to build. Really? Um, wow. Yeah. And, uh, you know, just, it kind of go went with the theme of the song where it's just, it's me and a girl and how I'm just in love with the mask. I live in the mask and, you know, there's a scene where she's showing me a funny video that she saw on her phone and I'm just sitting there on the couch and just with the, <laughs> you know, and yeah. it just drives her crazy. And, and I think that's also a relatable sure. subject too, you know what I mean? So, um, Oh yeah, yeah there's, that there's was, 9 million fun. different things. Yeah, there's nine mil million different things, and my wife hates it because I'm, you know, I'm, I'm a part of the dopamine machine. You know, like I'll, I'll see a yeah. funny TikTok or something, you know, some some stupid meme or whatever, and I'll show it to her. Right. And like I judge her by the eye roll, like how far her eyes roll be <laughs> in the back of her head. Yeah. <laughs> so that's why I know it's a good one. If it's a really good one, her eyes go completely in the back of her head. Um, that's the way she. Tells Do you have me the ones with it. your wife where, like, you know, you both between the two of you, you, you know, you send like fifty reels to each other, and she's like, you know, thirty behind, and then she, and then I'm like twenty behind. <laughs> You know I mean? Yes. Yeah. So it's funny because my wife's not very uh, on social media very much. I mean, she's on it, but she doesn't post or she doesn't, you know, I, right. I'm, I'm the poster of the family. 
Um, yeah. but she has been sending me like funny ones through, through the, ins through her Instagram account as of late, like I'll okay. be on the back porch smoking and she knows that I'm not coming in for a little while. And so she'll right. send me a funny meme and then I'll be, I'll come in and be like, ah, that was pretty funny. And that's like, yeah. uh, kind of thing, but it's not every day. Uh, but when I get it from yeah. her, I'm, I feel, I feel important because she's not on social yeah. media every day. So, <laughs> Oh, my wife is sending me something. I'm cool. <laughs> yeah. 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 No, but I see what you're saying about, you know, um you know growing up and you know and having to do research and books and you know encyclopedias and all that kind of stuff right. and i always you know i'm you know I'm, i might be a little bit older than you but i i i remember i remember a, a time when we didn't have those phones and have the access right. i remember beepers and all that kind of stuff i used to yeah. make fun of people with beepers i never yeah. ha I, don't, I had one for work but i don't think i had a personal yeah. one um right but it, it's one of those things where like i always think about and i see the kids and i have three kids i see my kids and other people and other young young adults uh using it and i always wonder like my the type of my personality you know uh just let me grow up in this generation today and see how i would fare out because i don't know right. if i would last very long because i have one of those type right. of personalities where like it'd be dangerous you know if you if you break up with a girl the girl breaks up with you you know and you're 16 17 and you see her all over social media with a new boyfriend and yeah. you know, you're just very, you know, it's just, it's crazy, man. Uh, you know, how, how serious it could be, you know, when you're, yeah. when you're constantly on it. So uh, that's what I always wonder when I, when I, and we're so connected like to everything too. Now it's like, you know, yeah. when, when I was, you know, in junior high, it's like, I did a lot of stupid shit. Right. But right. there was nobody recording it. <laughs> <You're> right. <laughs> right. And no one's going to bring it up in 30 years and be like, share exactly. the post. Like, Hey, remember when you did this <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> yeah so that's why you always got to kind of watch out now because everything's pretty much you know i mean people take pictures at parties and people you know take videos yeah. and this and that now you gotta you know be on your best behavior and, you, and especially with like bands and on the road like the the motley crews and the you know the skid rows of you know days of old of you know all that right. kind of stuff you know imagine right. if they had social media when they're going through all that kind of stuff oh God, you know those yeah. guys would be locked up and canceled you know within like the first yeah. show of the tour <laughs> <laughs> the first show yeah <laughs> yeah yeah so um but yeah it's a, it's, it's a great song um and when did you write it do you do you did you write it through the pandemic you said so um dopamine machine was it was actually kind of a unique one in the sense that yeah like usually it's just it, it's me that you know kind of comes out with i can play most instruments except for drums i mean i can keep a beat but um, with dopamine machine, it was actually my buddy, Chris, who we've worked with, oh man, for like 10 years. Um, and he is an uh, engineer producer, um, at a, um, he's, he's just got his own home studio, um, about an hour from where we are. And, um, he kind of, I think he was like, he writes a lot of like jingle stuff for like uh, Sesame street. And like, so, you know, he's, oh, wow. he's pretty good. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, I think it was like July of last year, he texted me and he's like, dude, I, I have this really cool idea for a song. And I think it's, you know, up your alley. Do you want to collaborate? And so he sent me just kind of like the skeleton of what, you know, he wrote and, um, and we just kind of went from there. So he wrote a lot of the music, um, and then I wrote all of the, you know, the vocals and the melody and just all that harmonies and stuff. So it's actually, it was a really cool collaboration because I've never collaborated with another producer in the sense that like we both wrote a song together. Usually yeah. it's either me or like when I wasn't a solo artist, it was the four of us in a mm -hmm. room, you know, one of us mm -hmm. would come out with a riff and then the other guys would, you know, collaborate or whatever it was. So it was a really cool experience. Yeah, so when it when it came down to recording, who was recording all the all the instruments? Are you are you just doing primarily the guitars and he's doing everything else or how, Yeah, how so work? he was he was doing most of like he did all the drums, um he did the solos and then I did most of like the um you know, like the rhythm stuff. Sure. Um and then uh, and then all the vocals and and all that stuff too. So, yeah, it was it was a fun experience. It was different for me like ha having a song sent to me and like this is this is the basic idea. What can you come out with? You know what I mean? Cause it's usually um, yeah. part of the beginning process, but it was a really cool learning experience. And that's kind of, for me, that's what music is about is like learning from everything that you do, you know? 
yeah and exactly and, and being a solo musician i mean you got you you really have to like learn a lot and, and be a, a jack of all trades you know if you're gonna be if you're gonna record and and write everything and you know collaborations are great but you know at the end of the day it's you you know just trying to make these songs yours yeah. and you know what i mean so it's it's a lot of uh it's a lot of work and i don't know how uh how you do it uh in, in this day and era you know with 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 streaming and all that kind of stuff um so let's let's go back to the beginning let's 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 start where uh you know so i i guess it's 2024 i'm looking on spotify 2004 is when you started releasing music well at least on spotify so it's been 10 years or actually 2014 sorry yeah 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 2014 so it's been 10 years um where did everything start for your love like where did your love for music come from as far as knowing that you you just loved it and wanted to find out more about it i think like in a certain way i think i've always loved music you know i, I think it's always been a part of me i have um a couple family members that are very well versed in music that kind of taught me a lot when i was a kid um and so i've been i've been in bands really since i think my first band i first band i st i can do that now because i'm old um <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> it's a trademark my first for band, old people exactly um <laughs> and i am the professional old person i don't, I don't do that anyway um i got my first guitar when i was 12 uh -huh. um and and really how that started was like i was doing sports before that and i love sports but i'm short and uncoordinated <laughs> and yeah uh, my 12th birthday my parents got me a guitar and i picked it up and i was like you know what i can be short and uncoordinated and do this right right and yeah. and honestly like that was where it started but i think for me i think music is just something that you're born to do mm -hmm. um and i always give the analogy like like if freddie mercury was working at chase right like that would be right. really weird you know what i mean or like if, you know <laughs> right. if mike trout was your tax guy right like right yeah it would just be like this this just yeah. does not you know what i mean it's so it's like now the other side to that is you can you know you can learn to be a musician you can learn scales you can learn to do this you can you know learn to solo you, whatever it is right um but i i think certain things like i don't think john lennon learned how to write songs i think john lennon always knew how to write songs mm -hmm. he just got mm -hmm. better at it as he went on and on right so yeah um so for me it was always like i was always in the studio with my cousin he owned a, st a recording studio um i think when i was like 13 and he taught me everything about recording bands and um i just kind of immersed myself in everything that i could and tried to learn at every opportunity that i had um so i think i've always been a musician but really with dreams of vertigo what what happened was i was in a metal band um like 2010 to 2012 um which sounds funny because i know like most people like he's a pop punk kid or whatever but no yeah. well you've co you, you covered uh you covered event sevenfold and in, in yeah. lincoln park so like i know yeah you have exactly a, a wide range of influences but yeah go ahead right so um when i got out of that band i was going through quite a bit um kind of emotionally and i won't get too far into that but uh, it was kind of like i i had exercised all my options in the metal band and i just wasn't into it anymore um yeah. i didn't get along with some of the members and i mean you, i'm sure you know what that's like um so i decided to start a band that was actually originally we were going to be kind of like dashboard confessional um and eventually add you know a full band element and um i met my buddy devin who was our original guitarist and it honestly just kind of you know exploded from there um so dreams of vertigo has always been about like what's next like what can we do sure. next to like top the last song you know which is a hard thing to do especially for 10 years you know what i mean <laughs> yeah i mean you know with you know you had a band at one point so if you can give me a little history as far as you know uh did you start off solo then had a band and then 
went back solo kind of a deal is that the kind of transition you now you're kind of in the solo yeah thing more or less like when i started it was like it was just going to be like acoustic stuff every once in a while i you know i i knew when i started just acoustic that i would not only would the audience get bored because i don't look like chris caraba um or whatever that guy is from second hand serenade i don't look like them right so sure. when i'm on stage people are like oh my god he's hot um I knew that I had to add like a full band element. And I knew yeah. that if I didn't add a full band element, I would get bored. Right. So sure. that was always the plan. And then we, I just honestly got lucky to, to meet and work with some of the most talented people in Southern California. I've, I'm just, I'm, I don't know how that's happened, but I'm so lucky. Um, yeah. And then when they left, um, and they all left on good terms, you know, like Brandon got married and he has two kids and, you know, Devin moved to Georgia, I think, and Brandon, or sorry, Gons moved to South Carolina. So it's like they all kind of, right. I mean, they grew up, you know, life grew happens, yeah. Yeah, things absolutely. like that. It's not cheap in California either. So that's another aspect. Um, yeah. So, I, you know, I, I, I kind of toyed with the idea of like, do I even want to do this anymore? Because that, at that point, we were four or five years into the band we had already done quite a few things that I had kind of set as a goal when I started in 2014. Um, mm. And then I released my cover for uh, One More Light um, by Lincoln Park, which was like a year after Chester died. And people just seemed to love it. And it just, I think it ignited a fire back in me. It's like, okay, maybe I can do this. Right. Maybe this is sure. what I'm supposed to do. So, yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, you know... It's crazy, you know, you know, and I think, you know, when you get older and like you said, living in San Diego and, and people, you know, focus, uh, you, your focus gets shifted, right? So you're either going to, you're either going to have like kids or you're, you're in a long-term relationship or you're moving out of state or whatever, all these different factors. And it, it only gets harder to create a band, you know, uh, at an older age and, and yeah. all that kind of stuff and you see these bands that are are you know you know our age are getting together because they were in other bands and stuff and i think that's really awesome and everybody's still continuing to pursue pursue music and i just wonder how like difficult it is especially you know uh with with the constraints of you know time and money uh to be able to do it and you know it, it seems to be you know um it's still a great outlet for for bands and i'm so glad that you know everybody's carrying it on alive whether or not they're making money at it but they're still giving yeah. you know that 110 percent of of you know living out their passions you know so it, uh, kudos to you and to every, all the bands that are out there trying to do it you know yeah and i think like honestly at the end of the day you have to make music because you want to make music and you have a passion for it you know right. um you know i i always tell people don't make music to make money right like because you're in right. it for the wrong reasons you know, right. like that's not what it should be about. It should be like, I have something to say, or, you know, I have a passion for this. You know what I mean? It, it's just like with sports, right? Like how many yeah. people play sports in little league and then become, you know, in whatever professional league that they're playing. Like it doesn't happen. You know what I mean? No. But if you no, enjoy yeah, doing it, you know, you're still working your nine to five job and then, you know, doing beer league or whatever, you know what I mean? So sure sure yeah and yeah. speaking of which uh, uh you said you were in the music industry when you're not creating these uh these power pop punk songs and these uh amazing tunes uh what what do you do for uh the music industry and i've got some follow-up questions on there yeah um honestly i do a little bit of everything um started out uh just strictly in production so um uh, like i said with my cousin he taught me a lot about um you know recording bands and producing Engineer, bands yeah. and stuff like that and and like i got a i got a kick out of that like i i really enjoy watching a band grow from like you know the scratch tracks to the final product you know that's just that's a cool thing for me um yeah. it started there and then you know kind of slowly i worked my way into different aspects you know booking bands um I booked uh, the Iron Maidens maybe 15, 20 years ago, which was they're like the all female tribute to Iron yeah. Maiden. Oh my God, dude, they're so good. It's awesome. Um, yeah, my first Such real big idea. band did it so cool. They're so good. They're, like you would, you have no idea. Like it's, yeah. if you close your eyes and just listen, it's like, <laughs> this is Iron Maiden. Like it's crazy. Um, 
That's cool. But yeah, and then I did. Um, I I worked with the Ataris. Um, I booked uh, Ice Nine Kills on their very first uh, California tour, which was really cool. Because awesome. like you know you, you see how big Ice Nine Kills is now. But I, I just yeah, kind of much. worked my way into different aspects, and then I started doing like Spotify promotions, like right around um, and ads, like right around COVID and stuff like that. And it's just you know, I, I honestly feel like if you Put your feet in any aspect that you can, you know, especially with what happened a few years ago, right? Like yeah. you're, you always have some sort of work to come in. You know what I mean? Because the, right. the music's all I know. You know what I mean? Like I, I would yeah. be terrible at taking your order at McDonald's, you know? <laughs> I, think, I think everybody would be. And I guess now it's yeah. all iPads anyway. So I'm, I guess I'd be out of that job too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's uh, you know, I always wonder like when you're in the industry and you're and you're playing as well, like does it does it make you jaded at all, or how does it affect the music that you make being an actual in the industry, or does it open your ears to like okay, I don't want to do that, or I do want to do this, or this is what I was missing, or you're learning kind of tricks of the trade as far as like seeing things, you know, on the other on the other foot, um, you know, how's that kind of working out and. Yeah, exactly. That's the, um, you know, it is at, at the beginning. And, and really the reason I started working in the industry was because we have, do you guys have play, pay to play there? Uh, I'm sure we probably do. You're talking yeah, about having to buy, ta buy tickets to get in the show? Yeah, buy, so, yeah. Oh, yeah, so yeah, basically, yeah. basically that's why I started long, long time ago was like, I, I was tired of, you know, getting asked to play at the, uh, the whiskey or the Roxy or whatever. And it's like, oh, yeah, sell 60 tickets on a Tuesday in front of nobody at, for the 6 p.m. slot. You know what I mean? I was just, I was tired of that. And so that's yeah. why I got into it. But yeah, no, it, it, for me, it, um, I think it opened doors because I'm coming to a lot of people from the business side. And then when it, turns around and I need to, to book a show or I need to do a tour or whatever it is. You know what I mean? It's like, I've yeah. already built my reputation and these guys know me and they love me. Um, so it opens up more doors for my own music. You know what I mean? So um, it's a hard industry, you know, and it's, it's very, um, it, I, the way that I tell my bands is like, you have to, you, you have to be told, no a thousand times and still mm -hmm. be okay to get up and try that one thousand and one time you know what i mean it's sure. it's you you really have to have thick skin you know and, and it's hard and even if you get that yes if there's no there's still no guarantee you know yeah <laughs> so. right yeah yeah i remember those i remember those pay to play uh things speaking of which because i lived out in la for uh, a couple of years and i remember okay. I, I, I had some friends in some local bands and they're like yeah we have to sell like these 60 tickets i'm like what the hell like uh yeah. i thought that was just crazy now as, as far as like florida i i've never I, i'm sure that it does exist here um i've been out of actually the local scene for for quite some time i've always been bouncing yeah. around and moving and doing all that kind of stuff but yeah, that's 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 crazy. But you know what? A, a lot of you know, with life, it's 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 all who you know, and and doors open and doors close, and never burn a bridge. Uh, oh yeah, you know, those lessons that our parents tell you: never burn a bridge. You know, because you never so know, true. you never know who's going to be behind that one wall that you need to get. Uh, you know, that behind that door that you need to get. You know, in, in front of. So yeah, it's it's, it's dude. I, I've man. met people that I've worked with like 15 years ago that you know ended up like running a record label or like now they're working with uh, actually one of my really good friends he was uh he was scheduled to be the um stage manager for green day for the hell oh, omega wow. tour um which this was before they had to reschedule it due to COVID or whatever but you know yeah and had i burned my bridge with him or you know somehow screwed his sister or something <laughs> you know what i mean it's like <laughs> yeah yeah, um, yeah i would have never got the opportunities that i got you know what i mean so it's like yeah i mean you you have to don't burn 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 don't burn bridges you know oh 100 percent. and uh you know what speaking of green day that's i guess that's a good, a good seg segue uh you did cover a green uh green day song and i think that's where you and i first came in uh it's probably one of the first songs i helped you promote way back way yes, back in the day yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. um yeah, who wrote uh, who wrote Holding Caulfield? Uh, it's the Green Day cover. You have a really killer um, 
music video out it's kind of like a solo you're doing everything and this and that and all the different frames i love the way that it's shot uh how important was green day to you growing up and were they one of your favorites growing you know growing up so yeah green days green days really been my favorite band since kerplunk um i kind of discovered them shortly after kerplunk right before dookie came out um and i mean i i feel like that they've they've they started the ripple effect of like all the other bands that i got into because of them you know it's green day and no effects and the ataris and mxpx and stuff like that and it all started with green day and and you know still however 30 x amount of years later i'm still I, i still every single day i'm listening to them so yeah they're a big big influence on me too um and i you know so i did the green day cover basically i did it for because billy joe's birthday it was his 50th birthday and i was like all right i got oh do was something. it i've never done a green oh, day so cool. i've never done a green day cover yeah um i've always wanted to do a green day cover every once in a while like it shows i'll do like uh we'll do like american idiot or like she or something like that but um yeah, yeah i did it basically for you know to celebrate um his 50th birthday which was just it's such a fun experience to do that too yeah, shot for through my mind to see if I could find the words I left behind. Was it just a dream that I've been long ago? Oh, well, never mind. Well, it hasn't been the first time. Yeah, the shot is driving me clear. That's what I say, it is a boy. Uh, it was really cool and i do remember that now i mean it's been a while what was that like yeah what, two three years ago yeah so that would have been three two three. years ago yeah two or three yeah, years ago a, yeah yeah it's a great it's a great song and and that was like one of those uh when i was de- desperately looking for new music i found that and i was like oh hell yeah oh and cool so, uh, Cool. Yeah, yeah, it was it was really cool because it was around that time, and I think you know the algorithm, or maybe a, you know Big Brother was spying on me that like you know I might have talked <laughs> about it, and next thing I know, like your song pops up on Spotify. I don't know That's how those so cool. al- al- algorithms work, but I found yeah. your song. I found it. Uh, I thought I thought it was awesome. Um, you know, and there's another another really cool song um, that you've done. You've worked with a lot of. Uh, you have a lot of songs. I was going back to your catalog, and you've worked with with Tony of Mest. You've worked with um, Mike Carrera uh, from Max PX on Head is, Head versus Heart. Uh, like I said, Tony with uh, Facade and uh, Adrian uh, Adrian from Zebra Head and Assuming We Survive. Let's talk about Typical because this is another uh, power pop punk, uh, you know, in your face. And this is you know what I had never heard the song until about two hours ago. And oh, doing, cool! Do, doing my research and it is freaking amazing, man! It's freaking awesome. Oh, thanks, man. Um, and it, you, you did say the liner notes uh, for the for the podcast, the pre-show questions. That's one of your your more popular ones or, or favorite ones from from your fans, and I I completely understand. Let's talk about how you got Adrian on it, and uh, you know I know he's just stepped into the to the I guess the front man uh, for Zebrahead over the past what year or two now, but he was yeah. in uh, assuming we survive, and I know he's still in that band. Uh, how'd you get hooked up with him, and how do you know him, and um, you know how how did it all come together? Geez, so I mean, I've known Adrian for a while. I think how I met him was Devin, our original guitarist. Somehow he knew him, and I don't, off the top of my head, I don't remember that story. And um, at the time, assuming was assuming we survive was one of those bands that um, in the Southern California, you know, Orange County scene, they were definitely coming up, but they weren't near as big as they are now. Um, so like it was one of those bands like I had heard of them, but I yeah. hadn't heard them. And um, you know, eventually I just checked them out and 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 Adrian is just like one of the coolest people you'll ever meet. Um I've he's one of those guys that I've never heard anybody say a negative thing about him ever. Like he's just the coolest guy ever. He's the most yeah. most down to earth guy. He'll 
help you whatever with, with whatever you need, even if you just met you three minutes ago, you know what I mean? So, yeah. um, typical came to play right at the end of me doing things as a full band. Um, that opening riff was, it was just like a riff that I just kind of came up with that we ended up using as an intro song before our shows. Mm -hmm. But it couldn't, we couldn't really come up with anything after that. We just would go into whatever the, our right. opening song was. Um, so that was like kind of the last song that I, that I wrote with the band, but it was really only that first kind of dan, 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 that beginning part. Mm -hmm. um, and then I, I think just one day I just, I ended up writing the rest and I thought, you know, it'd be cool as if Adrian could sing on this. And I texted him and he was so into it and we just was got it, into yeah. the studio and uh, he just, he fell in love with the song, which is a cool thing. You know what I mean? It's like when somebody yeah. you respect and you love, hears your music and they're like, dude, this is really good. Like that, you know, makes you feel better about yourself too. Um, and sure. so we finished the song together and then, um, kind of COVID happened as we wrote it towards the end of, I think it was like December, 2019 was when we mm. kind of were wrapping mm -hmm. it up. So, um, January rolled around and everything was fine. And then kind of like, I think it was like what it was in March when everything kind of shut down. So yeah, yeah. yeah kind yeah, of like I delayed it a little bit. Um, and I think it ended up coming out in like June or July or whatever, but, um, that was such a fun experience, you know, and it's still like to this day, like, um, that song in head versus heart, uh, I've never played a show since I've written it that I haven't played it. You know, it's one of my it's one of my questions. Uh, uh, um, I think about this often when I see bands, um, you know, uh, you know, enlist like Mike Herrera from MXPX or or Tony or Adrian, you know, just sing on a song kind of a deal. And like, how do you, you know, uh, I, was, I was speaking to another band that they had somebody else on. Like, how do you, you know, get those connections? And I, I know you had been friends with Adrian and. But you know the Tony Lovatos and the Mike Herreras, and like, is there something? Is there like a, a hotline number? You know, to try to get those guys if you have no idea who they are. You know, how to get a hold of them, um, or um, you know who you are. How do, how does that kind of how does that kind of work? Or does money talk and say, hey, I got five hundred dollars, or I got a thousand dollars to burn? Can you come sing my song? I mean, is money talk sometimes. Or what? But yeah. it's one of those things. It, it's a little bit easier now with social media that it's like, okay, if I want to work with somebody i can reach out to them you know yeah that being said i have like 50 unread messages from billy joe so um <laughs> you know oh, what wow. i mean um yeah. but you know it it's one of those things where i feel like it's connections you know if you know the right people that you know know the right people like with mike it was just i i was really good friends with um her name's heather i've i've known her forever and she did all of the flyers um for myspace uh for my career's solo project oh so cool. she's yeah. just really good friends with him and i reached out to him and or i reached out to her and i was like hey like like what are the odds you know what i mean it's like yeah and that's what i'll that's the other thing i tell people is like just try you know just you know see if they'll say yes if they say no they say no you know what i mean but they could say yeah. yes you know yeah, there's a I, I did see which I thought was pretty cool. Um, I don't know if you know Jesse Leach from uh, Kill Switch Engage. Yeah, he's, yeah. He's he's doing now. He's basically putting it out there. He said, "Hey, if if you want me to, you know, of course you can like do these different packages, right?" So he's like, "Hey, if you want me to, you know, write a song, co-write a song with you, it's going to cost you that much. Or if you want me to just have my vocals, yeah. of course it's going to be cheaper. But I want to let you know I'm out there. You know, hit me up on email, all that kind of stuff. And I think you're that's so cool. You know, I think that's so awesome, right? If that's your favorite, 
guy right there if you're in metalcore yeah. and you know you're you you're looking for somebody to give your band some kind of legitimacy and you can scrape up you know a few hundred dollars or whatever they're they're yeah, charging whatever they charge get, yeah whatever they, i have no idea what it is i don't know like there's an after or whatever there's a you know union kind of wage that these artists get but um i thought that was really cool and i, I wish a lot more artists would be a lot more vocal like that saying hey you want me on a song because right now it's like you know it's like the wizard of oz like oh you know i'm gonna write him hopefully he says yes you know what i mean so right it right. would be cool to have like that artist page or something you know write a song or i'm sure there's probably uh a, a websites out there that i have no idea about and if yeah you know, listeners uh, let me know i know that there's a couple i'm not sure if there's any like specifically for like music artists or whatever but yeah it's like yeah. at the end of the day it's just just try like you never yeah. know i mean like the worst that they're gonna say is no right and right exactly move on to the next one you know what i mean yeah and everybody responds to social media too i mean even like you right know, you know anybody you just write them and say hey listen i'm in a band check my our page out if you're interested right. uh, you know like you know how much is it to charge or whatever i'd be doing that right left and right if i was in a band you know totally what I mean? especially if you want to make some extra money right yeah no absolutely so, like who's going to turn down yeah. free money you know but i mean you know i know <laughs> I, I know uh i know egos get involved with it and like well right. it's not a great band and you know all that kind of stuff you never know how right. it's going to take but the more right. like you said the more doors you knock on you know the more you know exactly open yeah exactly all right so let's talk about speaking of metal and that's a good transition let's cover uh, let's talk about i want to talk about your Avenged sevenfold cover because i saw the amount of views that this song this video got and it's mm -hmm. like twenty two thousand views, and that I mean that to me is like I mean to me at least that that is like huge. You know what I mean? Like I'm happy if I get a hundred views on this podcast. Yeah, um, it, it's just one of those things where uh, you know it's a great cover. Uh, I, I'm I'm a night and day kind of Avenge Sevenfold. I'm a hot and cold with them. Um, yeah, but it is okay. One of, but but it was one of my uh, better songs that I like that you covered. So let's talk about that and oh, nice. what kind of influence that Avenge Sevenfold had on you. And wanting to cover it. so i grew up and live still in orange county and um i That's grew up from in, too, right? yeah it's so like yeah. so literally my neighbor was uh the rev's cousin and, and there was just there were so many different connections like i worked at the mm -hmm. rehearsal studio um that they were practicing at before city of evil came out and um this girl that i was in choir with was dating zaki vengeance at the time like when we were in high school it's like it like that's how close we were yeah. um but at the time i hated avenged i hated avenged because like and this right. was like you know they're before waking the fallen um so it was like it was all okay. screaming and that was really before i got into any sort of screaming bands um and um but I, I, like I grew up in the same scene. Like we were playing in the same, you know, 400 capacity room shows and, you know, but yeah. they were obviously getting really big and stuff like that. So it was really, you know, like Avenged has always been that band where, and they've obviously evolved a lot over the last 20 ish years, whatever it is. And yeah. um, they've lost a lot of fans, but they've also gained a lot more, um, sure. you know, and um, they were always just one of those bands that I just loved. And um, I did it again because it was the 20 year anniversary of Waking the Fallen, and oh, okay. which is hard to believe because yeah, that record yeah. to me came out like four years ago. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Right. Yeah, I mean, a lot of and, these, a lot of a lot of the scream core like kind of stuff are starting to hit those big anniversaries now. And I'm dude, like, yeah. oh, fuck. I just I just got a, a from Autumn to Ashes a vinyl. It was like their 25 okay. year anniversary on uh, oh on God. Vagrant. I'm like, holy crap! It's been 25 years since for you know since uh from Autumn to Ashes. I'm like that. That's when I know I'm getting old. Like Faith No More's and like all my earlier bands that I love. Right, you right. Know, like those are hitting those big milestones. But I don't. I'm not expecting like these. You know these these metalcore fucking bands. You know that that are starting to hit their milestones. That's so crazy. It's it and it's like it's somebody said when someone thinks 20 years ago is like the 1980s but 20 years ago yeah. was the early 2000s and that yeah. seems weird so to true. me right? i know man i know it's like 20 it's years so it's like you, you still want to go back to 19 something right like 1998 right. was 20 years ago yeah exactly. in your brain you're yeah like, <laughs> you're not yeah Raise your
yeah, chapter four was just it was one of those songs where like I had I had a list of like three or four songs that I kind of wanted to cover um from Waking the Fallen, and it was just trying to the first thing, really, especially for me doing it as a solo artist, um it, it is trying to find a drummer, right? Um mm. because the rev was one of the best drummers of our time, you know, like yeah. just the stuff that he did was just like insane. So finding a drummer was the first thing. And so I, I found this amazing girl um, that's played drums with me for a couple shows and she's, she's really into Avenge too. So um, we ended up chapter four was a song that took about a year and a half to make actually. Um, oh, really? from the beginning stages of tracking the drum. So what we did, and I won't go too far into it, but we, um, I knew I wanted to collaborate with another singer and I found a singer, um, tracked the whole thing, um, with, uh, Jamie McMahon. Uh, he's done, you know, me first and gimme gimme. He's done all the, no, a bunch of the no effects records, stuff like that. So, um, yeah. tracked most of the stuff with him. And then I found this, um, female singer that we rehearsed with for a while uh won't go too far into it but we definitely had some disagreements and okay. um it was just one of those things where it was like now the track is completely done she's on it i released it um you know long story short we were shooting the music video and she canceled like an hour before she was supposed to show up wow and then just kind of disappeared <laughs> so um Wow. Now the song was already out on iTunes and Spotify yeah. and stuff like that. So I right. had to actually go back, find another singer. Um, you guys have had um, Taken Days, right? Yeah. You guys have had Taken yeah. Days on your show? Yeah, yeah a few so, episodes ago. Yeah, they're good guys. Love yeah, guys. so Brent's girlfriend, uh, Brittany, um, mm -hmm. I met her just at a show that I was playing with Taken Days, and she said she was a singer, and I heard her sing. And, uh, you know, a month later, she was on the track, and – she was in the music video and and i feel like i rearranged the song a little bit and i feel like it went from like here to like way up here like she just wow gave it a different life you know what i mean and even though yeah, it took yeah. a year and a half and thousands of dollars extra you know what i mean like it was it was worth it to me you know yeah it it, it came out great um i i love the visuals of of the video and everything and it, it, it is one of those songs like if you're going to cover uh event sevenfold that would be one of those those songs you know um it, it's funny and i'll tell you a funny story i was working in radio and and we had this like saturday night metal punk show and and we got the nice. opportunity as one of our first like major interviews uh um event sevenfold invited us at the house of blues to go backstage oh, nice. with them before their show we got to meet zachy v and sinister g and we sat there and talked with them and we had a, a segment on our show called and i was a, i'm a huge mike Patton fan uh I, I, i'm a die hard faith no more mr bungle all that kind of stuff um yeah yeah all his pro all his projects and so we had a, we had a uh, segment on the show called uh mandatory mike and it was like we would play you know three songs by mike Patton, whether it was peeping tom it was mr bungle or whatever like we would play and we just play three songs you know three songs in a row and so nice. I had asked them about Mr. Bungle and they both lit up and they both, you know, Mike Patton and all that kind of stuff for us. So yeah. I was like, do we just become best friends? Do you want to do karate in the basement? <laughs> yeah. uh, we had, a, you know, we had one of those moments, you know, um, step brothers. I love it. Yeah. 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 So it was like, it was really cool. And my, my buddy and I still talk about that, that interview is still to this day. Cause we're still doing it on a mini disc and all that kind of stuff. We weren't doing it. Oh, live geez. On air. Yeah. 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 We're doing those old school, you know, in the, in the back, but, uh, it was really cool and those guys were super nice and we did a whole bunch of different events with them uh over the years and super nice guys and super great band uh the only thing is i didn't see m shadows once in the whole like 10 years i was on radio he was always <laughs> that guy on the bus that didn't want to talk to anybody but it's okay um that's a that's but, a singer thing it's definitely yeah. um from someone who's also a singer there's two sides to it like you you don't want to talk to people yeah sometimes because you feel like you know even if you're in a band that had the greatest drummer in the world and you know it's such great i mean every single person in avenge is, is amazing but like still people just want the singer you know what i mean and it's like sometimes yeah. you just you, i just need some space you know what i mean so, yeah um no, and I, I, but you're I also the face it, of the band yeah exactly exactly Tough. um you know and i get and we're just stupid radio radio people and i'm like you know whatever i like i i <laughs> 
I am what I am, whatever. It, it, it was fine. Like, I, I never really, like, took it personal. You know, yeah. I was a lot older, too. But if I was, like, if that was my favorite band of all time and, you know, oh, I, yeah. I met er everybody from Faith No More, but Mike Patton's like, nah, I'm just going to chill on the bus. I'm like, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, but it's all no, it's all good. Um, yeah. But, uh, yeah, never meet your heroes or try to. I don't no, know. yeah. Yeah. Something there. That's what I've uh, heard that, too, yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's there's been some, you know, I've got stories about great guys and bad guys, you know, and I, it's, it, you know, it's, it's, you know, it's one of those things where you're going to meet all different types of people regardless, you know what I mean? Yeah. You're just kind of, kind of just like, be cool, but, you know, I met the, uh, Chris Aiken from Strung Out the other night at Strung Out show. He was the coolest dude in the world, and him and I go way back. Yeah. I, like, I knew his cousin. He's from Orlando, and we, we shot the shit, and uh, just really cool, and it was just, you know, makes things a lot better when you, when you get to meet right. him, you know what I mean? Right, especially but, when they're stand-up guys. Yeah, yeah, totally. It was a uh, it was a good show. Um, Adolescence played and Mercy Music. Nice. It was the first time I seen Mercy Music, uh, and they yeah. killed it. Those I don't know if you ever seen those guys. Uh, it was the first I've time never seen, seen them. them, but I've heard they're just like one of those bands. It's like you have to see them before you die. <laughs> yeah, I mean the bass player and uh, the singer guitar player are like they're jumping around on stage. They're super tight, very personable, like very like you know rock star ish. You know. Um, they're really great. Um, what's what's one of the bands that blew you away that you know that you've been to a show and it was just like oh my god maybe you didn't think it was going to be uh, as big as you thought it was going. To be. Uh, there's a couple. So like one of the very first bands that like really blew me away and it, they were the opening band or not the opening band they were like so I, we went to Warp Tour I believe it was like 2000. 2002 2003 i believe it's it must have been 2002 yeah um and there was this band and they got on stage and they were like doing backflips off the the uh, amps and just yeah the singer was coming in and, but it was it was interesting because they were putting on this just incredible incredible show like they were playing you know at you know the rose bowl or something like that in front of right. 100,000 people there was four people there, including me and my friend. So it was like me and my friend and yeah. two other random people. Right. And yeah. um, that band ended up being story of the year. Oh, um, wow. And this was right before page Avenue came out and yeah, yeah. Um, they were just one of those bands where it was just like, they, they put on a show. They yeah. just, they entertain you. Um, obviously green day. Um, but I would say like on a, on a smaller level, you know, um bands like uh i went to go see mest uh probably 2003 ish and at the time they were the openers for goldfinger i had heard mm -hmm. of goldfinger but i'd never really yeah. seen them um they blew me away like when they play mabel and like everybody comes on stage yeah. and yeah, they're yeah. just you know feldman is jumping off of the monitors and stuff like that like that's yeah. like that's memorable i felt i i had heard of Goldfinger before, but never really checked them out. Like I, they were, they're still like top five uh, of my favorite bands. Oh, they are, you know, and I was, I was thinking about this cause um, you know, there's, you know, I, I like pop punk. Um, I love the green days and I've got into punk, you know, that was, it wasn't my, my gateway band, you know, uh, no effects was, but um, okay. But, but you know, the uh, Goldfinger, I think, in my mind, should be on the Mount Rushmore, and they should probably be the biggest band known to mankind because John Feldman is one of the most incredible like singer-songwriters yeah. of our generation, and I think he's the yeah. most underrated pop punk. Uh, you know, he's the whole band itself should be on that uh, should be on that hill. You know what I mean? Um, they are, you know, the pinnacle of pop punk to me. Um, I, I I like them better than I like Green Day. Um, oh yeah, you know, yeah, it, it's it's one of those things where like. Um, every album is just, it's, it's just, it could be a hit. It could be a radio hit. It could be, you know, it yeah. is what it is to you. You know what I mean? And they've got that key to success with John Feldman and, oh man, I don't know. That's all I got to say, but I don't, Feldman yeah, is, I'm, I'm um, glad you discovered him too. Feldman is the reason that I became a music producer. Like I, I didn't know what a music producer was until, you know, I discovered Feldman and what he does. And the craziest thing about Feldman is that like he, I mean, he's he's worked with some of those big bands, right? He's you know he's done Story of the Year yeah. and Goldfinger, and it, you know he's worked with the Used and Escape the Fate a million times. But like, 
a lot of people don't realize he's also written for like Ashley Simpson and Hillary Duff. And it's like, and like this that so boy band, there's like that one big boy yeah, band that, um, that blew up seven degrees of summer, yeah. seven seconds of summer. Yeah. Or something, something like that. that. Yeah. Um, and and yeah. it's like, so he can write a song, right? Like, you know, it's, yeah. it's one thing when you're working with like escape the fate and the used and story of the year. And like, like that has its, its sound that has their own elements. They have their own, but then you work with like, you know, Ashley Simpson and Hillary Duff, that's completely in a different realm. Right. So yeah. like if you can, as a songwriter, as a producer, write on both of those spectrums, like that's, that's a, that's a talented dude. That's a talented dude. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's, it's a gift, man. Like playing the guitar or playing an instrument, you know, some people are born to do it, you know, and they yeah. have that ear for it and that patience for it. I went to recording engineering school, but I'm like, I don't want to sit behind a freaking, uh, bored for the rest of my life and work on a drum kick you know what i mean like I, right, I, I, right. My, that my my personality doesn't have that you know you need to have that certain personality to be like right oh we need to do this and put that filter on and you know tweak this and right tweak that and like oh my god bless america and then like have to deal with the computers and yeah. oh man i was sw i was swimming when i went to full sail i'm like this is way too much um, oh man but it was good it taught me it taught me a lot no it's all good yeah. Um, so, right, so what what's uh what's one of your loves about uh you know um as far as being a producer or what's uh I guess in your mind what would be like the dream job in the music industry be be a a, a touring musician a sell out you know sell out clubs or do you want to be a producer or do you want to manage bands what's what's your dream what's your dream you know I mean in short maybe a little bit of both but um yeah. you know uh for me it would definitely be growing bands, you know, watching a band, you know, start yeah. with three monthly listeners on Spotify to, you know, opening at, you know, I don't know, whatever stadium, you know what I mean? It's like to yeah. be able to, to know that I helped that happen, um, you know, to be able to produce a band like that, to be able to work with them, you know, yeah, with their ads or their Spotify or whatever it is. Like for me, that's the dream is to be able to watch a band grow. Um, yeah. The touring thing is fun, um, but I'm old as fuck. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, I don't, yeah, yeah. yeah. my butt, like I have practice here in an hour and it's like after two hours of playing a show, my body is just toast. Right. You know what I mean? Right. So, and then you gotta I get love... your ass in a van and, and travel the country. Like it's, you could, you could yeah. It, you know, and sleep in, sleep in a van and eat Taco Bell. And, you know, it's like, it's, I love being on stage. I love performing for people. I love the um, connection that you make when you're singing a song and you look out on stage and somebody is like, either they're just like, oh my God, or they're singing along to your song or like, even the messages that you get from people that's like, hey, this song saved my life. Like, that's just like when somebody sends you a message like that, it's like, yeah, like someone else is here because of something I created. That's That'd just like, so you true. can't even yeah. describe that. You know yeah. what I mean? So, um, but for me, it's like, it's just about growing, you know, helping bands grow is what I love to do. I love to watch a band grow from like, with like with ice nine kills, right? Like they were playing yeah. in front of three people um, when I booked them for their California tour. Right. And now, I mean, Spencer's, you know, everybody wants to work with Spencer, you know, and, and everybody yeah, yeah. in this kind of, you know, metalcore emo feel like they all know who Ice Nine Kills is, you know? Yeah, so, no. And yeah, I that's think such a I, cool thing. No, it's, it's, it's amazing, you know, and I think that's one of the uh, things that you and I have in, in common to where like you want to work with bands and record bands and produce bands and see them grow like I want to. Yeah. take that what what you've done and help them grow you know you know through a podcast or through a post or or whatnot right. or, you know what i mean and support it you know and that's 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 one of my biggest thrills too is like you know a band that i might have worked with like three years ago they're now headlining yeah. or doing whatever and we were used to chatting right. you know whatever like you knew because i discovered their song and no one had heard it and like it's like some kind of self a uh, sense of pride i guess you know that you get yeah out of it, the fulfillment of it i guess right um yeah so yeah, it's a, it's a, it's, it's just, it's a cool feeling, you know, <laughs> to know that you, even, even if you're just a little tiny piece of like their success or their success story, you know, that's, yeah. that's cool. Yeah. It's absolutely. a cool thing. Um, all right. Well, uh, let's, uh, 
let's uh wrap things up here um but doug thank you so much for uh, uh joining the podcast what is next for for you and uh what's the next few months look like for dreams of vertigo um so yeah so i mean next next month july the end of july we're doing if you're local to orange county um we're doing the orange county fair which is a big thing we've um the fair the oc fair was closed for a couple of years uh for oh, covid and so the last time we played was 2017 so it, it's been it's been quite some time um so that's the end of july july 26th um and then uh either this week or next week i'm getting back into the studio uh, record some more, um, probably a couple more covers, a couple more okay. covers. And then, uh, I may be hopefully, um, nothing's for sure yet, but I, I hopefully be getting back into the studio with Adrian from assuming we Ooh. survive and zebra head, yeah. uh, maybe work on something original, uh, again, uh, I figured it worked the, what the first time. So why not try the second time? Right? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Just get them on a whole album, man. You guys be dual singers. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So, um, yeah, qu actually quite a few things, um, in the cool. works we haven't really quite confirmed yet, but yeah, it's a fun time to be, uh, in dreams of vertigo, yeah, which is well, just uh, me. So <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it was a good time. Yeah. It's a great time. <laughs> yeah. You're talking to me. <laughs> pat myself on the back. <laughs> pat, pat yourself on the back. <laughs> yeah. Now, well, D Doug, I really appreciate it, man. Thank you so much for joining. It's really great to, uh, uh meet you in person and talk, talk, uh, talk music with you and, uh, go Braves. Yeah. Go represent. Braves. They're losing right now, but are know, they? Whatever. Yeah, it's well, only the yeah. third inning, though. So we're good. Uh, well, yeah, they don't show up till the eighth inning anyway. Uh, typical Atlanta. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> like in football too, they're exactly the same way in football too. Dude, so it's so crazy, <laughs> it's so crazy. All right, dude. We'll uh, take care. We'll talk to you later. Yeah. Thanks, man. Thanks for having me. All right. See you.